telephone booking for this evening, a party of six at ten o'clock. Right. The name's Howard. Right, I'll make a note of it. Hello, is that our eight o'clock booking just coming in? Where? No, I don't think so. Well, it seems to be on his own, whoever he is. I better go and... Hey, he's smiling at you. Friend of yours? No, he's not. I have met him once. Oh. Well, one of us had better do something about him, shall I? Oh, it's okay, I'll see okay. to it. Good evening, sir. Hi. Can I help you? I yes. certainly hope so. Uh, could I have a table for one, please? Yes, of course. May I take your coat? Oh, thank you. I didn't telephone, I'm afraid. Decided to drop in on the spur of the moment. As it happens, we're not very busy this evening, sir. Won't be any problem. But will this table here suit you? Ah, great. <laughs> you don't remember, do you? We've met before, you and I. Really, sir? Don't tell me you forgot. You're called Rob. Uh, you came to a show way back, uh, well, last autumn sometime. Ah, yes. Now you mention it, I think I do remember your face. Mr. Rowland? Rocky Rowland. You came with Joanna Nash, right? How's that for a keen memory? Full marks, Mr. Rowland. I'll bring you the menu. Uh, would you care for an aperitif first? Uh, give me a vodka martini, would you? Uh, a large one, very dry. Oh, and the name's Rocky, by the way. Rob and Rocky. We ought to have something in common. Really? Uh, ice and lemon in your vodka martini, sir? No, thanks. Freeze the glass. And stop trying to put me down, Rob. It's a very happy coincidence running into you again like this. Well, don't you think so? I'm afraid I haven't given it a lot of thought, sir. I'll fetch the menu for you. What's the matter? <sighs> Give him a menu while I get him a drink. Sure. What are you looking like that for? That you like him? Oh, he's a real charmer, that one, and he knows it, too. <laughs> Who is he? Rocky Rowlands. Oh. He's in the rag trade. Joanna Nash works for him. You mean he's the Rocky Rowland? Double R and all that? I mean he's as slippery as a pair of eels. Double E and all that. Come on, Jeremy. Turn that light out and settle down. Oh, Mummy, just one more page. You always say that. But I've just got to the really exciting part. It'll be just as exciting tomorrow. <gasps> now, come along, shut the book up. There's a good boy. Have you cleaned your teeth? Yes, of course I have. Sure? I told you. Oh, sorry. You see, you are sleepy. <laughs> Have you said your prayers? I've said them to myself. All right. Mummy. Good night, darling. Sleep well. But I want to ask you something first. Why is it every night when it's time to go to sleep, you always remember something you want to ask me? No, but this is different. It's important. Please, Mum. All right, then. Just one question. It's about Daddy. What about him? Well, you know you and Bill were talking about getting somebody else to work at the freezer plant, because you're all so busy. Yes. Well... Do you think perhaps Dad would like to do that? <laughs> no. I shouldn't think so for a minute, Jeremy. But you could ask him, couldn't Darling, you? Darling, it's not his sort of job. He'd hate it. Well, I don't see why. I think it's a very good sort of job. I'd do it if they'd let me. Yes, but... <laughs> well, in any case, Daddy doesn't want a job. He's got plenty to do at home looking after the family while Liz is working at the Herald. That was only like, well, sort of temporary. He said so. What? I heard him talking to Mr. Tully at the boat yard. He said he felt like going out and getting a real job again. A proper one. He said that, did he? Hmm. But honestly, darling, he wouldn't want to come and work here. He'd go and find something like the job he had before at Abercrombie's. I suppose so. I just wish he'd hurry up about it, that's all. What do you mean? Well, I'd like him to go out to work every day... Properly, like everybody else. All the boys at school have dads who go out to work. He's ordered another brandy and some more coffee. Bully for him. He can afford it. Yes, I know, but, well, the thing is, he wants you to serve him. Oh, yeah. Well, look, shall I tell him you're too busy? It's not going to be very convincing on a quiet night like this. Mm. Oh, blimey, i better go and sort him out, I suppose. Well, here you are. One brandy and the coffee pot. Thank you. Your brandy, sir, ah. and your coffee. Fabulous. You know that old saying about service with a smile? I'm not complaining, mind. The service has been really great, but... <laughs> couldn't you crack that stonewall face for a minute and come out with a little grin, maybe? For you, sir? Certainly. Don't strain yourself. Hey, listen, now that you're not so busy, why don't you fetch another glass and have a brandy with me, okay? I'm sorry, sir. That's against our house rules. Oh, come on. Sit down. Look, do me a favor, will you? Look, I'm, I'm sick to death of my own company. I feel like talking to somebody. I'm very sorry, sir. Some other time, perhaps. Oh, that's an idea. Yeah, some other time, like uh, later on, you mean. What time do you finish work here? Uh, 11.30, midnight, later than that sometimes. You name it, I'll be waiting outside my car. No, sir. It's very kind of you, but when I finish work, I'll be going straight home. Uh, listen, you want to know something? I've lied to you when I came in. 
I said I'd come in here by accident, meeting you was a coincidence. Well, that wasn't strictly true. Mr. Rollins, I really am very... Don't, don't, don't go away. Just let me finish. I'll tell you the whole sad little story. I was supposed to be meeting somebody tonight in this neck of the woods, and, well, my date didn't show. <laughs> I suddenly remembered Pryor's restaurant. And Joanna told me you worked here, and, uh, well, I really took a liking to you that first time we met, Rob. I felt sure we'd meet again someday. <laughs> What's wrong with keeping in touch with old friends? Mr. Huh? Rollins, we met once a long time ago, and very briefly. I don't call that a basis for friendship. I'd say we were almost total strangers, and as far as I'm concerned, we can stay that way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll fetch your bill. What did I say? Rob, what did you say to him? I just stopped him getting any wrong ideas, that's all. Oh, well, you certainly shook him. He looks awful. Does he? That's his tough luck. Here, you can take him the bill. You certainly took your time getting that lad off to sleep. What was the trouble? No trouble. Hello, Bill. Hello. I just rang through to the freezer, called Bill over. Quite right, too. I'm sure you've done enough work for one day. Well, he's going to have to do a darn sight more the way things are going. I've just made some coffee. Do you want a cup? No, thanks, Bill. Matt, do you know what Jeremy said? Not now, love. Tell me later, eh? We've got a bit of a crisis on our hands. Huh? What do you mean? Well, that's why I called Bill in. It's going to be a case of all hands to the pumps. Matt's just had a phone call from your stepfather. From Brad? Oh, how is he? You should have called me. Did you speak to Mother? No, no, I didn't. It wasn't a social call. He rang up with a business proposition. Oh, what was that? Apparently, among all these other interests, he's got some kind of a tie-up with a company called McDonald Harker. Big international agency dealing in real estate. Mm, I think I've heard of them. Haven't they got offices in that big tower block on the way to Swiss Cottage? Oh, that's right. Employ about 500 people there, so he says. They've been having trouble with their staff canteen. And what Brad suggests is that we should take over the whole catering franchise. Supply a selection of menus every day for lunch. All frozen here, so all they have to do is use their own microwave ovens. What? Let me get this straight. They want us to cater for 500 lunches every day. More or less. Well, it's what you might call an offer we can't refuse, isn't it? But, Matt, the freezer plant's already working flat out. Well, we were talking today about having to take on extra stuff to cope with the work we've already well, got. that's why I called you both in. I don't care how we do it, but do it we must. Oh, bloody wars. You don't suppose I'd let a chance like this slip through my fingers, do you? 